If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. All right, let's move to Banjo and Erica, my lands, um, mastermind members for over three years now uh, in their fourth year and graduated platinums and networking king started their own networking group out there in mississippi they've done it all rotary networking groups etc raised millions of dollars in private money all right uh you got seven minutes to to give them as much as you can because after you were going to crystal and then to chaffee cool so I have calculated that I've raised over $500,000 in private lending due to uh, networking groups that have helped me do this is BNI. Fun fact, I've never joined a BNI. I've visited a bunch of them though. Uh, so uh, my own networking group that I started, thanks to the mastermind, pushed push me a little bit to do so since uh, every networking group that I know of is about an hour away from us because we live in a small town. And the fun part that we've really uh, latched on to here recently is networking when you're not really going to a networking group. In other words, do stuff that you just love doing anyway and network while you're doing it. So uh, part of that 500 grand is a guy that I have in my gym. We go do jujitsu and he brings his daughter and we started. I We had a we had a. Uh, we had a uh, private lender luncheon coming up and it, and it kind of motivated me to go talk to him. And we took chatted it up a little bit. And, and he right then and there, as we're sitting in the gym, he pledged um, some, some funds and he's up to like 250,000 now. And uh, yeah, so that's all that networking has done for us. Um, as far as deals go, I've had a lot of deal uh, or I, I should say leads come in. The first good referral, though, was just recently out of a, a new networking group that I've joined about an hour away from me. And, um, yeah, we're working it. We're working a deal. It's not a deal yet. Uh, we threw an offer out there. We get to see it happen. But in a nutshell, we've raised over. We had a, out of the 600 grand, 100 of that is pledged. But the other 500 is already at work through through nothing but networking. What are some lessons learned, Erica? Banjo, what are some lessons learned uh, when it comes to networking? Of course, uh, you've been very, very involved in the Rotary Club, which is a whole nother conversation. But what are some lessons learned and advice that you would give to uh, the members here? I think for me, it's just really just putting myself out there and letting people know what I do. Uh, I tend to be rather quiet and not really uh, put myself out there and introduce myself to people. But as this business has become more and more successful for us, I get more excited about it. I get more passionate about it. And when people see that you're passionate about something, they immediately want to know more. So just telling people what I do and just them seeing how much I love it gets them asking questions and and wanting to learn more about what we do. Banjo, was, what, um, go ahead, Banjo. I'd say one good takeaway, uh, if anything, because you're hearing all of these awesome things that we're getting from these networking groups, and uh, you might have a tendency to go into a networking situation saying, all right, what can I get here? But that's not really what the, the deal is. You got to go in there looking to serve people, looking to uh, add value to people's lives, and then the leads and all of the other stuff just naturally come. So, Banjo, um, while well, you got the floor there, what comes to mind as to when it comes to networking, what not to do? Oh, don't, uh, when you want to get into a conversation and there's a few people talking, don't just stand on the outside of them with that staring at them blindly, <laughs> being the awkward guy, <laughs> learn some techniques, like saying something as simple as, Hey, you mind if I join you? Um, yeah, make sure you're getting around the room too. You don't want to just stick to to a certain one person or just one little group. You want to introduce yourself to everyone and get to know what they do so you can serve them as well. Yeah, uh, I guess you got to go in there with an open mind. You got to get out of your comfort zone. 
And so I guess what not to do would be don't go in there and speak to no one and just expect people to come to you and go uh, be just a consumer. Try to give people value and uh, and get around, talk to some people, shake some hands. Don't just go throwing around <laughs> your um, your business card to people if they don't even ask for it. That's a big one you teach. That drives me. I mean, that just drives me bonkers. <laughs> bonkers. I mean, <laughs> you know, I've been in networking situations and, you know, these people are like throwing up all over me <laughs> about whatever it is they want to talk about they've they've shown no interest in me i mean it's like blah 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 and here's my business card and it's like i'm thinking to myself number one why'd you give me your business card i don't even ask for your business card why you give me your business card and you know secondly was um what are you doing are you like in a competition for how many <laughs> business cards you can give out and then there are you know off you go so, you know, you just, you just can't argue with the principle that wins every time. And that is become interested in the other person. You know, I never tell anybody in the world what I do unless they ask, you know, it's amazing. Speaking of networking, it's amazing who you can meet on an airplane. Amazing who you can meet on an airplane. Carol Joy and I were flying back from Texas day before yesterday. Um, Carol Joy's, uh, one of her nieces, our nieces got married, lovely wedding. So we're on the airplane. We're flying back, sit down, uh, there on the plane. We're getting all settled in. This gentleman sits next to me and, uh, we're getting all settled in. We have a little bit of pleasantries, you know, and, um, and so I'm talking along. And so we take off and we're starting to altitude out. And I said, well, Mike, Mike was his name, Mike Tognaletti. Ain't that an Italian name? They've never heard of no. <laughs> Tognaletti's before I said, well, Mike, what keeps you busy and what are you excited about these days? And so he told me he was a high end head hunter and he's big on LinkedIn and all this kind of stuff. I said, so I had childlike curiosity and I started, I was asking him, well, tell me more about that and tell me more about that. And so, you know, there's a lulling conversation. What do you think he eventually asked me, right? Well, what do you do? And then off we go. So again, it's all about being interested in them and, you know, instead of trying to sell anything, cause we don't sell beg, chase, persuade and all that. Thank you, Banjo, Erica, for sharing y'all give them the very sophisticated PMA golf clap right there. Thank you so much. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnorcom slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R dot com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnorcom slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.